Hello again, welcome to another episode of the Uranium Market Minute. My name is Justin Hewn. I am your host, the founder and publisher of the Uranium Insider Pro Newsletter, the only investing newsletter that focuses solely on uranium and publishes on a regular monthly basis. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really been appreciating all the great comments and all of the support with this new podcast. Um, as always, nothing in this video is intended to be investment advice. I am not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. Always do your own due diligence when it comes to investing. Always take responsibility for your own actions. With that said, let's jump right into the daily scoreboard. The spot price of uranium continues to drift down a bit here, 41.50 mid-market um, per pound. It's uh, drifting down a little bit every day on relatively low volumes, but has not uh, been in the market very frequently over the past couple of weeks. Um, hence the drift down. We had some pressure at month end for September um, as traders, as I explained in previous market minutes that uh, traders who have offtake agreements with producers will often uh, manipulate the market down by selling into the market. I'm um, trying to get that month end closing price as low as possible before the uh, before the coming month where they their forward um, agreement for the pounds that they receive for that month is based on the previous month's closing spot price. So, but now we're we're into October a few days here, the second trading day of the month, and the price continue to drift down a little bit. Again, on pretty pretty low volume here, so not too concerned. Um, spot uh, this the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. They did not buy any pounds on Friday. However, they did issue shares and uh, and raised another seven point eight million dollars. Um, they're now sitting on uh, as of this morning uh, as fifteen point one million in cash. Um, and they closed the day on Friday at a 4.2% premium to NAV. Again, they need to be above a 1% premium in order to issue shares into the market to not be dilutive to their shareholders as they take a 1% um, fee whenever they purchase uranium. So, and as far as the ETFs go, um, URA and URNM both reported no change in outstanding shares, no shares issued, no redemptions, both ETFs still sitting on a combined uh, just under 1.5 billion in AUM. Um, still uh, holding a lot of those gains from September, both in terms of AUM and uh, money into the into the uh, funds. Uh, trading action today. Let's go ahead and take a look at the charts. Starting off with URA. Um, look at this. This is uh, something to take note of, folks. We have uh, pretty substantial volume today. In fact, this today's volume in URA very well could be the third highest daily volume in the history of this ETF. Um, this is what we've been what we've been looking for. Uh, what this essentially signals, in my opinion, is um, big money coming back into the space. And the thesis all along, not only back in in December and into the spring prior to Sprott showing up, was smart money positioning in equities before putting that money into the Sprott vehicle. So uh, this perhaps is what we've been waiting to, to to see over the past couple of weeks in this declining volume here that we've seen this. The, the prices uh, on most of the equities and the ETFs pulling back and the volume in decline. However, big jump in volume today, uh, right along with uh, a recovery in terms of the indicators for the chart. Let's take a look at uh, URNM. <clears throat> Again, big volume, much, much greater volume. In fact, double, if not more, the volume that we saw most days in the past week. Another good sign. Now, it did get some selling pressure throughout the day. We'll have to see if we had any uh, shares issued or shares redeemed in the next couple of days. But again, a really big sign to see this declining volume reverse. That very well could be some bigger money coming back into the space, positioning for seasonality and prior to throwing some more funds towards the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust for the purpose of buying physical, pushing up the spot price, henceforth pushing up the uh, price of the equities. Um, let's take a look at the Sprott vehicle, U.UN. Yep, um, volume still lower. Didn't see a big jump in volume in this one. So um, my thesis could be playing out here. Saw a bit of selling pressure here, um, but with uh, the spot price trickling down again, they very likely are still at a premium to NAV. So most likely they issued some more shares and bought some more uranium today. We'll have to see. Um, overall, basically what we're seeing is the sector firming up after that sell-off on lower volume. And that's totally, totally reasonable thing to, to see. And it's really great sign to see that volume come into the ETF. So I'm very curious to see how the rest of the week plays out. Um, if you're a member of Uranium Insider, not only did you receive October's newsletter this morning, but also uh, every Sunday evening, I update the weekend watch list 
which is all the stocks that we hold and recommend and um, what to expect in the coming week, levels to look for if you're still adding to positions, et cetera. So if you remember, please go check that out. Uh, every week I review that on Sundays. <clears throat> Um, let's take a look at the mailbag because it discusses um, this question discusses something that's very important for the sector. Justin, I'm confused. I'm not sure I understand the importance of long-term pricing in the uranium market as compared to the spot price of uranium. All right, this is a really good question. So um, throughout the years of the, of the the tail end of the bear market, there's always discussion about how the importance of the spot market and how important it is in terms of both, both the investing community and in the, nu the nuclear fuel market. So the spot price um, and the spot market is for deliveries less than 12 months. Okay, so it's typically utilized by traders or by utilities that are bolstering inventories, not necessarily securing fuel for the future operations of those reactors. That is typically done through long-term contracts. And these are contracts, I mean, technically long-term is anything beyond 12 months, but typically, uh, you know, a large utility will secure fuel for five plus years, sometimes even up to 10 years, and they'll do it out multiple years in the future to lock in that supply, um, knowing that either they've got a couple of years of inventory that they're sitting on, or they'll be able to come into the spot market or, or into a carry trade to secure pounds on a shorter time frame. The long-term price has basically been kind of sitting still. It doesn't get updated as frequently as the spot market. Um, the the long-term price usually gets updated only once a month. So at the end of the month on Thursday, we had both of the prominent uh, nuclear fuel consultants, UXC and Trade Tech, both drastically raised their price uh, on the long-term contracting price. Uh, UXC bumped it up to forty dollars a pound. Uh, Trade Tech bumped it up to forty-five dollars a pound. And Trade Tech is indicating that not only is this an indication of what they would call a base escalated uh, pricing, so they'll take the spot price and they'll they'll extrapolate that out into the future based on expected um, interest rates for for funds borrowed to purchase uranium. Essentially, it's kind of just a pricing in the future uh, rates to the present day spot price. But however, it also indicates that uh, buyers are raising their bid. They're actually raising their bid, end user buyers, um, for what they're willing to pay for this long-term pricing. This is a very big indicator for um, the bull market is real, let's say. So you can argue that the spot price going up by 60% in five weeks, uh, was largely almost entirely driven by Sprott, by the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust, which it was. We know that there were other players in the space buying as well, but it was mostly being um, moved by financial players, non-nuclear fuel utilities that are purchasing uranium. But the interesting thing about Sprott is that they're buying and holding, they're not trading uranium. So even though we had substantial trading volume in the past week, I think we had 3 million pounds in the spot market traded in the past week, um, that's traded, that's not purchased. That's a big thing. A lot of times that's that's pounds literally just changing hands back and forth, back and forth. Whereas Sprott or a nuclear utility is actually buying uranium to use it or in Sprott's case, hold it. So, <clears throat> The fact that the spot market has been moving up and now down in price, primarily due to uh, the role of financial players, the long-term price of uranium is not being manipulated by that by those same players. This is actually buyers raising their bid. Um, and of course, the spot price plays into that and has an influence on that, um, a pretty big influence on that. But when, when, where the rubber meets the road with utilities actually needing to go and buy fuel out into the future and secure these long-term contracts, this is what they're gonna be paying now. And that, in my opinion, is a big wake-up call for nuclear fuel utilities that are uncovered out into the future. We know that um, you know utilities in the EU are far more covered than the US utilities, generally speaking. They, um, they're supposed to hold at least three years inventory while well, in the US, there's an average of just around two years, um, possibly a little bit less at this point. Um, so their uncovered requirements going out two, three, four, five years are, are significantly less than the US, but the US is the largest market and the uncovered requirements going out in the future are substantial. So what that means is there's going to be term contracting. We've been waiting for this for a long time. And the mechanisms that have allowed the utilities to stay out of the term market, which primarily been the carry trade. So that's utilities um, securing fuel through a carry trader or a trader that will um, sign a contract to deliver uranium out, you know, two, three years into the future 
and then go ahead and cover those needs by purchasing the spot market or through an offtake agreement of some kind from a low price producer from BHP or from the Uzbeks. And the carry trade is largely um, uh, just, it's become untenable in this price environment. It's very difficult for a trader to predict where the prices are going to be on a two or three year time frame, and therefore be able to promise a, a particular price to a utility paying the trader um, for delivery out of the future. So because that has sort of dissipated, because we've worked through a lot of the standing inventory, the mobile inventory that came from a surplus of production in the previous decade, which we have, which is clear just by looking at what happened in the spot market in the past six weeks. You know, the Sprott comes in, buys 10 million pounds, and the price goes up by 60%. I mean, that's insane. Nobody thought that, well, first, nobody thought Sprott was going to buy that much that fast. But um, a different perspective would be, how, how can you imagine the price moving that much on only 10 million pounds? You know, we're, we're talking uh, uh, 185 million pounds uh, demand annually, roughly, by global nuclear utilities, and a, a 10 million pound purchasing in four to five weeks moves it that much. There's not a lot of inventory out there, folks, that's just standing. Of course, there are producers. There's producers that sell into the spot market, one and a half, two million pounds a month is what we estimate. But um, this long-term pricing jump is substantial and it's something to take note of. So uh, we're watching that. We watch the prices of all of the elements of the fuel cycle very closely. And we wa watch the fund flows very closely, which is really what the story is all about on an investing perspective. Um, is the flow of funds. And that's great to see the volume in this ETF. So um, that's where we're going to leave it for today. Hopefully that helps to explain a little bit the importance of the long-term contracting. And um, you know, I'll on one more note I'll just say is that one thing that the investors in the space have been waiting for for years to really kind of substantiate the um, the thesis that the bull market is here and it's it's officially on is uh, is the term price responding and, and moving upwards. And it has been moving upwards, but not as aggressively as the spot price. And we haven't really been hearing about a lot of term contracts being signed. So I have a feeling that we are going to be hearing that. And that's going to be in the coming months um, with Cameco's conference call and hearing just kind of through the grapevine. And if we pay attention to that month end long-term price as it bumps up, as it, as it stagnates perhaps, but if that keeps moving up, that's a, a really good sign for this bull market. And um, it's something that we cover extensively in our newsletters. We covered um, the reasoning behind this price jump. We covered the, the uh, importance of the term market coming back and, and the price jump in the long-term um, long price of uranium, as well as all of the other elements of the fuel cycle. We saw a big jump in um, UF6 as well this past month. So um, if you're interested in receiving a sample newsletter, uh, we'll give you an idea of the type of content we put out Go ahead and send us an email, support at uraniuminsider.com. Uh, like this video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell so that you will get notified whenever we put out a new episode, which is almost every day. Um, I'll go ahead and leave it there, folks. Thank you so much for listening. I will see you tomorrow. Cheers.